So I'm making this tutorial for a user on Discord and it was during Blender Royale I noticed that they had a few questions, very basic stuff that needed answered. So I'm kind of making this as a refresher course, just to get you quickly up to speed. Now, if you have any experience with Blender or if you have at least rendered out a file, probably not going to be the tutorial for you. This is baby steps. Now please do not think I'm insulting your intelligence, far from it. If anything, it's ignorance on my part, uh, from an instructor's point of view, or a YouTuber. Oh, I hate that saying. <laughs> but like I said, it might be ignorance, because people forget that not everybody touches every aspect of Blender. They don't go into the render engine, they don't go into compositing. Yeah, they might just be a modeler and they just might model, they might even just be a texture artist and just texture. So this tutorial will quickly set up a basic scene, we'll discuss things like the render engine, we'll discuss things like the render frame size, how to add an HDRI image, maybe you want to use an HDRI image but still have a background colour, very basic things to be honest. So let's quickly get started. Now I have nothing in the scene here, so let's add something, let's go to add, let's go to mesh, and we'll add in a monkey. Now generally you'll start in the viewport shading mode, so you get this kind of nice grey look. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the material properties first and foremost. We're going to add a material. Now one thing when we were doing Blender Royale, I noticed that you didn't understand that you could have several materials on the one object. So I'm actually going to show you how to do this. So let's add in a new material. So we can just hit the plus sign and we can go to new. Or you can just hit new. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make this pink. Now if we go into the render properties, we won't necessarily see something because we have no camera and we have no light set up in the scene. So, first thing we'll do is we'll go into the render properties and you can see it's a little bit dull. Now, one thing that you were actually getting confused with was when you went to the world properties here on the right hand side, you were selecting a colour or you were changing things up. Now hopefully you've got a better understanding but we'll go over the render engine first and foremost. So if we go to render properties, you have different render engines when it comes to Blender. You have Eevee. Now the best way to describe Eevee is a real-time render engine. It's absolutely fantastic. It's incredibly fast. Sometimes I will do a still image in cycles, but I'll actually do an animation in Eevee because of the speed. Now the second render engine that we have is the Workbench. Now Workbench is generally used for pre-visualization or generally just getting an animation quickly out the door for review. You wouldn't use it as a final render or generally wouldn't use it as a final render. Most people don't work in Workbench. When it comes to Cycles, Cycles gives you a little bit more physical based rendering engine, it's a little bit more accurate, it makes things feel a little bit more real, it uses the GPU for example. But for now we'll stick with Eevee because Eevee is actually incredibly powerful. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to quickly add in a light, just so we have some basic lighting. I'll quickly grab it and I'll just move it to the front here. And if we go to the light properties on the right hand side, we can actually put the power right up. So the next thing we need to do is add in a camera to the scene. So the quickest way to do this is go to add and go to camera down the bottom. Now, I don't want to move the camera about, I don't want to mess about clicking and dragging and doing stuff like this. So in the viewport, I'll just pick the angle that I like and I'll press control, alt and numpad zero. And that will automatically frame my camera. Now what you might have noticed is I have this kind of frame here and that's my render output size. So if I actually go to the output properties on the right hand side, you can see here the resolution is 800 by 800. Now generally when you start Blender it's usually an HD TV, it's 1080p, so it's usually 1920 by 1080. Now I'm going to go back to 800 and I'm going to show you a quick tip. You can actually save this as a preset, so the next time that you load Blender you can easily reference this. So all you need to do is click on the format presets and we can type in something like 800 pixels. You can see I've already done it here. And we'll just hit add. You can see it's now 800 pixels. So anytime we want to quickly go to a different render resolution, saving presets is a fundamental thing. It's pretty easy. Now when it comes to the frame rate, generally most people sit in 24 frames per second because that's what gives you that kind of movie feel. But realistically, most people go 29.97, just under 30 frames per second. It's up to yourself what frames per second you want to render at. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm not rendering a video. I'm just rendering a still image. So when it comes to frame rate, it's kind of secondary. Now, if you're doing something like a video, you have the frame start. So one here, two five. 
and that's how many frames it'll render out. But I have a funny suspicion you already know this, and when it comes to the output path, this is where we can actually save the file. But we want to take a look at some of the world properties. Now, the world properties, think of it as the way it lights the world. You can see here I have background and I have colour. Now, if I actually go into the shading tab, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly join these areas together so you've got a better view. I go to object here, this kind of box, you can see here I have a world output. I'm going to enable the render viewport so we can actually see what's happening when we render. And you'll notice that these actually kind of coincide. So we have colour here. So when I change the colour, the node will change here on the right hand side. And this obviously goes for the strength. So you'll notice that these are actually technically paired up. Now, if you want an HDRI image, so maybe you go to something like Polyhaven or any HDRI site. So generally what you would do here is, is you would add an environment node. So you can see here, environment texture. And I'm just going to quickly open something on a desktop that I've saved. And we can plug this right into the colour. And you can see here the HDRI has now influenced the light in the scene. And we can change things like the strength as well. But let's say, for example, we want to use the HDRI image to light the scene. But we don't want to have the HDRI image in the background. Now, there's several ways we can achieve this. What we can do is we can make the background transparent. So the easiest way to do this is if we actually go to the render properties and we go all the way down here to film, you'll see that we can tick transparent and that makes it transparent and it means we can throw an image in the background or we can play around with it in Photoshop, whatever. But I'm actually going to show you how to add a colour in the background and we're going to do it inside of the world shader editor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down an RGB node. Now obviously RGB node is colour. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm actually going to mix these two shaders together. So I'm going to mix the background shader with a colour. And then I'm going to plug this into the surface of the world. You can see here it's kind of overlapping ever so slightly. So if I change this to maybe yellow, it's kind of made it foggy looking. Now the best way we can hide this from the camera is using a camera ray. So what we can do here is, is we can add in a light path. We can use as camera ray. Let me just bring this up a little bit bigger. We can use as camera ray in the mix shader here. And when we bring this back, you'll notice that we're now using the colour. But we're also using the HDRI map to kind of give the object lighting. And the best way I can prove this is if we go into layout, I'm going to select the object and I'm going to add in a modifier and we'll just add in and we'll just quickly add in a subdivision modifier. So we have something like this. And I'm going to right click, I'm going to shade smooth it. So it's nice and smooth. I'm going to go back to the material properties and I'm just going to put the metallic right up. And I'll put the roughness down and we can start to see the HDRI in the background here. So I have this really kind of strange object going on. Now one of the issues that I noticed is you didn't fully understand how materials sat on top of objects. So essentially an object can have more than one material attached and I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. So if we select the object, we actually go into edit mode. Now, I'm in subdivision surfaces here with the modifier, but we can quickly toggle this on and off here, like so. So I'm just going to quickly select these polygons here, and we'll do the right eye also. Now I'm going to come back to the material properties. You can see that we have the material, which is red here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit plus, I'm going to go to new, and I'm going to assign it. You can check it out, it's went white. Now it's best to name your material, so we'll call this one eyes, and we'll call this one head. And we'll quickly go back into object mode and we'll quickly enable the modifier again so what we do is we put this real-time display on which is essentially this kind of screen and i'll go back into the material properties and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to select the eyes and let's say for example we want the eyes kind of blue like so perfectly fine now this is where you are kind of getting mixed up with the properties of the world or the surface properties so for example if we go quickly into shading the world will not necessarily influence the materials here. So we actually need to go to the object. And you can see here I have this principle BSDF, which is what you were using. So I'm actually going to put the mission and I'm just going to put the strength up and I'll make it a nice colour. And we'll just zoom right in here. And we'll put the mission strength up so we get this nice kind of glow. And we'll go back into the render engine. Now, when it comes to the render engine, the samples, eh, we can leave that at 64. 128 should be perfectly fine. But I'm going to enable ambient inclusion and you'll notice around the eyes that it should get darker. So you'll notice that shadows are slightly better because we've enabled ambient inclusion. Now we can add bloom. So when we add bloom we get this really nice bloom effect from the volumetric lighting. 
So we can play around with things like the threshold, we can push this up and down. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually create a depth of field. Now you'll notice that there's actually depth of field here, but this is slightly different from the camera depth of field. So let's select the camera, and you'll notice that we now have this kind of object data properties for the camera. So once I select this, we can enable the depth of field. Now, the quickest way to do it is using the dropper tool and we'll select the object and we can push the f-stop up and down. But I like to have a little bit more control when it comes to things like depth of field. So what I recommend you do is you go to add and you drop down an empty and we use the empty to actually control the depth of field. Kind of like a focus puller. So we'll go back to the camera, we'll go to depth of field and we'll select the empty. And now the empty theoretically should control the depth of field. So check this out when I move the empty. So we now have this nice kind of focus puller. And again, we can change things like the f-stop, how much it actually focuses, change things like the blade's rotations, but we're not really worried too much about this. Now I could go four or five steps deeper, but the best thing to do is hit F12, and we can see what we can get. So as you can see, we're getting nice shadows created by the HDRI, we're getting nice focus, and we're getting a pretty nice render that took less than, it didn't even take a second. So, I hope this video helps. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, you know what to do. Take care.